Join me as we explore the corridors of the human psyche and uncover the hidden treasures that pave the way to prosperity and abundance. The pursuit of wealth, my dear friends, extends far beyond the mere acquisition of material possessions or financial gains. It encompasses a state of mind, a philosophy that transcends monetary boundaries. It is about mastering the psychology of money, understanding the intricate dance between our thoughts, beliefs, and actions in shaping our financial destiny. Let me illuminate the path by shedding light on the foundational pillar of this inner game, the mindset. Your mind, my friends, is the fertile soil where the seeds of wealth are sown. It is the birthplace of every idea, every ambition, and every achievement. Wealth is not a matter of chance, it is a matter of choice. It begins with the unwavering belief that you are destined for greatness, that success and abundance are not mere fantasies but inevitable outcomes awaiting manifestation. Consider this, your thoughts are the architects of your reality. What you consistently dwell upon, you bring into existence. Cultivate thoughts of abundance, envision prosperity, and watch as your outer world aligns with the blueprint of your inner convictions. Embrace the power of positive affirmations and visualization. Paint a vivid picture of your desired financial landscape and let your subconscious mind pave the way towards its realization. Yet, understand this truth. Wealth is not solely about accumulation, it is also about contribution. The more value you provide to the world, the more abundance flows back into your life. Seek not only to amass riches but to enrich the lives of others. Zig Ziglar rightly said, you can have everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. The universe rewards those who contribute, those who sow the seeds of generosity and kindness. Now, let us delve deeper into the psychology of money. Understand that your relationship with money goes beyond the tangible bills and coins. It reflects your deepest beliefs, fears, and attitudes towards abundance. For some, money is a source of anxiety, a symbol of scarcity. They cling to it with fear, believing there's never enough. For others, it is a tool. It means to create opportunities and impact lives. What is your relationship with money, my friends? Do you see it as a friend or a foe? Challenge your beliefs and perceptions about wealth. Transform any limiting beliefs into empowering ones. Embrace a mindset of abundance, knowing that the universe is infinitely abundant and there is more than enough for everyone. Furthermore, the mastery of wealth psychology involves prudent financial management. Develop the discipline to budget, save, and invest wisely. Remember, it's not about how much you make, but how much you keep and grow. Educate yourself about financial literacy, seek guidance from mentors, and make informed decisions. As Warren Buffett wisely said, risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. Moreover, surround yourself with individuals who uplift and inspire you on your wealth journey. Associate with those who have achieved what you aspire to achieve. Learn from their experiences, absorb their wisdom, and let their success stories fuel your determination. Which leads me to my last point. When we embark on the journey of self-improvement, we're investing in the most valuable asset we'll ever own, ourselves. Knowledge is the cornerstone of this investment. It is the key that opens the doors to new opportunities, expands our horizons, and empowers us to make informed decisions that pave the way to financial abundance. Think of your mind as a garden. Just as a garden requires nurturing, attention, and care to flourish, your mind demands continual nourishment through learning. Reading books, attending seminars, seeking mentors, and gaining new skills are the seeds that, when sown and cultivated, yield the fruits of wisdom, innovation, and success. The great industrialist Henry Ford once said, anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. The significance of this statement cannot be overstated. Our ability to adapt, evolve, and remain agile in an ever-changing world lies in our commitment to lifelong learning. But knowledge alone is not enough. It must be accompanied by action. Imagine possessing a treasure trove of knowledge and insights, but failing to take the necessary steps to apply them in the real world. Action is the catalyst that transforms knowledge into tangible results. It is through consistent action that we bridge the gap between where we are and where we aspire to be. Personal growth is the fertile soil in which the seeds of knowledge flourish.
It encompasses not only the acquisition of knowledge, but also the development of essential qualities such as discipline, resilience, adaptability, and a relentless commitment to self-improvement. As we cultivate these virtues within ourselves, we elevate our capacity to overcome challenges and seize opportunities that lead to financial independence. Moreover, personal growth extends beyond the realm of acquiring skills. It encompasses the refinement of our character and mindset. Our beliefs, attitudes, and habits play a pivotal role in shaping our financial destiny. By nurturing a positive mindset, fostering a spirit of gratitude, and embracing a mindset of abundance, we attract prosperity into our lives. Let me share with you a powerful concept, the law of sowing and reaping. Just as a farmer sows seeds in anticipation of a bountiful harvest, so must we sow the seeds of knowledge, take consistent action, and persistently nurture our personal growth to reap the rewards of financial independence. Picture your life as a canvas awaiting your artistic touch. You are the architect of your destiny, and the brush strokes you make today will create the masterpiece of your tomorrow. Embrace the responsibility to sculpt the life you desire through deliberate learning, unwavering determination, and a commitment to continuous improvement. Financial independence is not merely about accumulating wealth. It's about having the freedom to live life on your terms, to pursue your passions, and to contribute meaningfully to the world around you. It's about experiencing a sense of fulfillment and security that transcends monetary gains. In closing, I urge each one of you to embark on this transformative journey of personal growth and knowledge acquisition. Commit yourself to become a lifelong student, relentlessly seeking wisdom and applying it with purpose. Remember, the road to financial freedom may have its challenges, but with dedication, perseverance, and a thirst for knowledge, you can navigate through any obstacle and emerge victorious. Thank you for joining me on this quest for greatness. As you embark on your journey, may you embrace the power within you, unlock your potential, and manifest the extraordinary life you deserve. The world awaits your brilliance, your unique contributions, and your unwavering commitment to personal growth and financial independence. What could you do if you had all the skills, took the classes, read the books, and burned them in night oil? What could you do? What true value could you develop? This is one of the better exercises. What could I become? What could I really do in the marketplace, in enterprise, home, family, experience, friendship, marriage? How valuable could I become? A means of you, valuable enough to work on what's not working so I can reach my full capacity. If I'm operating at 20, what could I possibly do with the other? Once you start understanding how valuable you are, it's a whole new experience. Understanding self-worth plays a major role in our ability to be self-enterprising. Our self-worth makes the difference between being lazy and being active, being self-enterprising. If we don't feel good about ourselves, we won't feel good about our lives. And if we don't feel good about our lives, we won't be very interested in looking for opportunities. Enterprise is always better than ease. Every time we choose to do less than we possibly can, it affects our self-confidence, our self-worth. If we keep doing a little less every day, a little less, a little less, every day that we keep doing a little less, we are also being a little less. Can you imagine what you'd end up being after 10 years of doing a little less every day? It's devastating. Think about it. Doing less could ruin your life. Now, you can reverse the process of doing a little less. You can reverse this process by using self-direction, self-reliance, self-discipline. You alter the course by doing a little more each day, a little more, a little more, a little more. And pretty soon, you'll develop a new habit of doing rather than neglecting. In days and weeks and months of doing a little more will ultimately increase your confidence, your courage, your creativity, and your self-worth. In the end, it's how we feel about ourselves that provides the greatest reward from activity and enterprise. It's not what we get or what we accumulate that makes us valuable. It's what we become that makes us valuable. Success isn't in the having. Success is in the doing. It's the process of doing that brings value. It's the activity that transforms our dreams into reality, that converts ideas into actuality. Let me tell you what I think most messes with the mind. I think that simply doing less than you can messes with the mind. It causes all kinds of psychic damage. I think being less than you can be, 
Trying less than you could try. Doing it with less enthusiasm than you could do it messes with the mind. It somehow damages the mind, damages our self-image. Because here's what I've discovered happens. The minute you turn this around and start extending yourself, you'll see immediate rewards. Maybe not monetary ones yet, but it's how you feel about yourself that's the greatest value. You see, it's not what we get that makes us valuable. It's what we become. Discover all you can do. See how much you can earn, how much you can share, how much you can start, how much you can finish, how much you can reach, how far you can extend your influence. Some people out there would have us believe that positive affirmation is more important than activity. Instead of doing something constructive to change our lives, they would have us repeating slogans and canned affirmations like, every day and in every way, I'm getting better and better. Well, getting better and better doesn't just happen from wishful thinking. Getting better and better only happens with the discipline of doing better and better. Discipline is a requirement for progress, and affirmations without discipline are, in reality, delusions. Don't get me wrong here. There's nothing wrong with affirming the good life, as long as we are disciplined enough to take action. Affirmations can be effective as long as we remember two very important rules. Number one, we should never allow affirmation to replace action. Feeling better is no substitute for doing better. And two, whatever we choose to affirm must be the truth. If the truth happens to be that we're broke, the best affirmation would be to simply say, I'm broke. Face it, accept it, be responsible for it, and change it. By admitting that you're broke, by saying it out loud, you'll probably be disgusted enough to start the thinking process on how to change it. Anyone saying, I'm broke, with conviction will most likely be driven from ease into action. Confronting harsh realities has an incredible effect. Confronting the truth and then applying the discipline to express the truth instead of disguising it inevitably leads to positive change. And reality is always the best beginning. You see, within reality lies the possibility to create our own personal miracle. And the power of faith starts with reality. And if we can bring ourselves to state the truth about a situation, then, as the saying goes, the truth will set us free. Here's another old saying, faith isn't faith unless it's all you're holding on to. If your life and circumstances have resulted in a situation that is ugly, call it ugly. If you've lost it all, admit that you've lost it all, be responsible for it. And if faith is all you've got left, use it. Create your own personal miracle. Once we understand and accept the truth, the promise of the future is freed from the shackles of deception. Once we accept the truth, the promise of the future will pull us. Also, one more thought on discipline. Here's the greatest value of discipline. Self-worth, self-esteem. People are teaching self-esteem these days, but they don't connect it to disciplines. The least lack of discipline starts to erode our psyche. One of the greatest temptations is to just ease up a little bit. The slightest lack of doing your best starts to erode the psyche. Instead of doing your best, doing just a little less than your best. Sure enough, you say, well, it's just going to affect my sales. No, it's going to affect your consciousness. It's going to affect your philosophy. Now you've got the slightest way to affect your own philosophy. Here's the problem with the least neglect. Neglect starts as an infection, and if you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. And one neglect leads to another. And the worst of all, when neglect starts, it diminishes our self-worth, our self-confidence, our self-value. You say, well, how can I get back my self-respect? I'm telling you, you don't have to go to 29 classes. All you had to do is start the smallest discipline that now corresponds to your own philosophy, like I should and I could and I will. No longer will I let neglect stack up on me so that I will have the sorry scenarios six years from now, giving some excuse instead of celebrating my progress. That's the get to discipline. Okay, let's get kids involved in the least of disciplines. One more, and then one more, and then another one, and then another one, and then some more. And the first thing you know, you're weaving the tapestry of a disciplined life into which you can pour more wisdom, more attitude, more strong feeling, more faith, more courage. Now you've got something, a vessel in which to put it. And now the equity starts to flow, and the early return. I'm telling you, if you start this process, 
Your return will have you so excited you'll commit yourself to this strategy for the rest of your life. You'll never go back to the old ways. Join a new crowd, join a new group, the disciplines to do it. Take action. Your self-esteem is defined as how much you like yourself, how much you respect yourself, how much you value yourself, and your interactions with other people. And the more you like yourself and value yourself, the more you like and value other people. And the more you like and value other people, the more they value like them. We also found out that self-esteem is like physical fitness. You can actually build your self-esteem consistently over time by doing and saying certain things. So, the starting point of building your self-esteem is for you to have a clear sense of who you are and what you want. Let's say, what are your very best qualities? What are your very best skills and abilities? What are the things that you do or have done in the past that account for most of your success? When you think back on the things that you're good at, the things that you enjoy, the things that make you happy, you'll find that you like yourself and respect yourself even more. The second way to build your self-esteem is to set goals. It's to say, if I could achieve anything at all in life, what would I like to achieve in the weeks and months and years ahead? And write it down, write it down, write it down. Here's what psychologists have discovered. Setting big goals for yourself improves your self-image and raises your self-esteem. You actually like yourself and respect yourself more when you have big goals for your life. You have more self-confidence and you're happier about yourself. A third way to build your self-esteem is through self-discipline. We say that self-esteem leads to self-discipline, and self-discipline increases your self-esteem. Does that mean setting priorities on your work? Saying to yourself, what is the most important thing I could do right now? And then disciplining yourself to do that. Now, here's the key, and it's the great key to success. It's called task completion. Whenever you start and complete a task, your self-esteem goes up. You like and respect yourself more. You feel like a winner because completing a task is like crossing a finish line. It gives you a feeling of winning. So if you start and complete any task yourself, your self-esteem goes up. If you start and complete your most important task, your self-esteem goes up very high. And you feel sometimes exhilarated. Your brain releases endorphins, which are called nature's happy drugs. They make you happy. And not only that, they motivate you to want to do more things and to do them better and to do them sooner as well. So those are some of the ways to raise your self-esteem. And especially underlying everything that you do, by repeating the magic words, I like myself, I like myself, I like myself. Know who you are, set clear goals, work on the most important things that you can do, achieve those goals, and discipline yourself to complete your tasks. And your self-esteem will go up and up and up.